did six president's clubs in sales between each industry. And uh, if you guys wow. aren't familiar with corporate, yeah, if you're not familiar with the corporate world, like president's club is like the elites, like Super Bowl trophy uh, for them. Mm -hmm. So what's been really exciting and working with agencies now is that the concepts that I used in sales with those all held true in every industry. So they already mm. tried it proven in like multiple lines of business. Yeah. So, That's and it was awesome. really fun actually. Like when I was in the gym industry, they told me that they're like, Yo, you're because that's where I did four of my president's clubs was out of the six was in the gym industry. And they're like, yo, you're crushing in this. Like, what's your next step? Like, don't you want to do something bigger? Because I'm selling, you know, a family yeah. of four. So to give you the perspective, a family of four was one unit. So a century club, which is their president's club was selling a hundred plus units mm -hmm. in a month. So I did that four times my first year. Wow. Yeah, dude, I made seventy five seventy five thousand dollars selling gym memberships at like twenty two years old. Like you can make money doing anything, dude. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah that's that's a hundred percent commission, bro. That's when you know Jeez. when you go. It's like what's what's something. Yeah, yeah, dude. and like I think it's cool because guys like Rob, he's not just one of those digital marketers who you know took a course from like. Ty Lopez or Iman Ghazi went out, landed a free trial client, uh, kept him on for one month, maybe, you know, made $10,000 in the span of the year and then decided to say, Hey, I'm an expert, right? That's what, that's what I love about you. Like you've done this in other industries. You have proof, you have like sales experience, not just in this space. And so that's why like what we're talking about today is like, so like there's so much credibility behind it. And like you said, it goes to all different industries, like no matter who's watching, like this, like whatever you're going to talk about, like it's going to work for everyone else. I think that's so cool. Yeah, I'm super, I'm, that's what I'm pumped about, man. And that's why I love sales in general. Like today on um, one of our coaching calls with our clients, we were talking about this Corona shit, coronavirus. Oh, I just dropped a, I don't yeah. know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm cursing and talking about Corona. No, you're good. So, you're good. You're good. So we talked about it and I was like, we're, we're talking about the leverage behind Corona. Dude, it's an amazing leverage right now. Like this is the best time to be making sales is during this coronavirus. And we were like showing the positioning mm -hmm. and that leverage, which we can talk about later, but huge leverage. And anyway, the story, like when I was yeah. in the gym, they're like, what's your next step? I was like, I bet you I could sell a corporate account. And back then we're like selling people coming in the gym. And I was like, you know what? This can't be any different. So I called up this company, really big company out in Kansas City. And uh, same day, I actually posted a picture of this in my Facebook group. And I sold 500 yeah. accounts in one day on a corporate account, same day. And no, no one's done it before. I kept the email. I put it in my Facebook group, show everyone. But wow. Because we were leveraging time, time and efficiency. So, like, mm. why should you have all these people? Like, why should you pay for their membership at your company yeah. or our gym. And it's because if they're happier, they're in here more, they're going to be more efficient at work. Here's the stats on how much it would increase productivity, thus increasing your bottom line and revenue. Here's what your net profit would be based on what you're telling me that you, your margins are. And I was like, it's silly not to do it. And so we ended up yeah. with the corporate deal. And that's how we did it by leveraging those key points. They're big problems, they're big pains, which is what we do. So, yeah. And kind of going off the whole coronavirus thing, a lot of people in my community uh, were, you know, they're talking about it. It's something that can like scare you a little bit. I know for me, I'm like thinking like, okay, how can it affect me? But I realize like there are like, you know, as long as you can solve problems, like I know I'm going to be fine for the rest of my life because I know how to sell and I know how to create solutions. And so I'm like, I'll go, I don't, you know, I'll go clean houses. I don't know. Like I can, I know that there is, if there's a solution, I can create a solution. Uh, I know how to sell it. And so one thing people always ask is like, okay, how can you use this whole virus thing as leverage? Like you said, how are you using that as leverage for when you're selling? Yeah. So I'm pumped guys. The only place I've talked about this is inside of my like private training. So I wasn't going to put it anywhere This is a good headline. This Woo! is going to be a good headline for this. <laughs> Yo, let's get some of this on the gram, bro. This is going to be, this is it. This is it, man. Let's go. Talk about leverage with Josh freaking uh joshua gavin you like josh gavin secret man. either one either one man either okay. one it's a secret stuff oh shoot man i didn't know people didn't know your full name was joshua uh, <laughs> they probably do i just do josh gavin because it's so much easier for branding on yeah, my yeah. profile funnel josh well, gavin's well, dude you're talking you're talking about uh interviewing iman in this group and his last name 
if you use that zoom, his last name is like super long. So you're going to see it's yeah. really, really long. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really, like, who I are you, dude? It. But anyway, he looks so, like one of those guys. Who, yeah, sorry, yeah, he looks like one of those guys who scams you on the messenger saying, "Hey, I'll book appointments for you for like one hundred ninety-five dollars." Like his name, Iman's name that's, looks that's like what one of those his last guys. Name looks like yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's one of those guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, that's funny. Yeah, what yeah are you so, uh, so leveraging Corona, where I'm gonna give you two angles. Number one for you. Number two for the businesses you're selling, because at yeah. the end of the day, like you need the minds, or maybe not you, but like people need the mindset shift in their business how it's helpful for them but then also they need to know how to position the sale to their actual client so their client says mm. oh yeah i should buy now so number one for you uh for you guys watching right now if you have a business uh, of consulting or coaching at all whether you are in uh, an agency selling social media marketing whether you're selling uh coaching sales whatever this is for you if you're a coach teaching people to do stuff, this is for you. So first of all, customer service is like the most important thing in a business when you talk about longevity. But mm. people see, and this is what most people see customer service as, is customer experience. But the truth is customer service is just another form of sales. And it's the next stage in the sales process. And a lot of people stop the sales process at the close. And that's why they don't yeah. maximize. That's why they don't have a higher value per client. So... I cannot tell you, man, how many times in my, um, my lifetime in sales last 10 years that uh, I have made sales from complaints and from compliments, AKA customer mm. service, Dang. right? People would come into the gym to cancel their membership and I shit you not, like not only would I full save the deal, but I sign up their sister. Like, <laughs> dude, we, That's awesome. we, we called it the pick six. Like I yeah. love customer service issues, bro. The reason why is because in sales, like we live every day to be able to have mm -hmm. conversations to show people we could help them solve a problem and then charge them for it. Well, guess yep. what customer That's service true. issues are? Customer service issues, bro, are them coming to us without us ever having to make an effort. <laughs> yeah, Yo, that's true. Yeah, I would see that. So I'd be like, give me the customer service issues. I was like, it's revenue. So, and then obviously a compliment, you would then upsell, downsell or cross sell. So, um, that's, yeah, so that's how I see customer service. Now here's where the benefit is for you as a business owner. If you guys are watching this from wherever you are, um, during the Corona epidemic, okay. Is to understand that if you can learn to maximize your backend and systemize your backend to put emphasis on referrals, cross sells, upsells, down sells, and how to be able to turn your complaints into revenue, you are going to not only be able to continue to scale your business. That's what we're doing. Like mm. you can't really see this, but we just restructured our entire backend onboarding sequence for new clients coming in to make sure we can maximize referrals. Mm. Um, because even though your traffic slows down, if you can increase your average value per client, your revenue doesn't really change. <laughs> Dang, dude, that's, a, that's crazy. I didn't think about that. Yeah, but what gets even crazier is when this whole thing is over, assuming you're pushing <laughs> yourself into the market harder with ads, which you should be, like we're about to turn on YouTube ads um, to collect mm, a bunch of people yep. get them our world because once you fix this maximizing the client then once you have traffic turned on you you create the perfect storm the perfect symphony yeah dude that's that's smart i didn't even think about it. I'm, now i'm thinking like okay how am i gonna do my i'm thinking about my back end and all that stuff that, yeah. that's smart so that's then I, okay what's step two sorry i didn't mean to cut step you two off. this is for your client because now you guys are going to be watching this being like oh shit duh like of course <laughs> Okay, well, for your client, if you want to sell them, because right now, here's what's going to happen. Like, this is what I project happening. Like, right now, we're going to find out over the next month. I don't think people's cost for appointment is going to go up. In my opinion, it's mm. probably going to stay the same or go down because people have so much time on their hands now that they have more time to jump on a call and to be able to hear out okay. your opportunity. That's what I think is going to happen, but they're not going to want to buy because they're yeah. afraid to spend money because of li liquidity. So... What I'm seeing happening is that when they hop on the call, since your cost is lower, if you reposition it by saying what we know from trends in 08, the market tanked, we all know what yeah. happened. Well, guess what happened now, but faster is that the market tanked again or is tanking. So all we know for a fact is that this is going to happen again. We don't know when, yeah. we don't know how aggressive, 
All we know is that it will for sure happen. So what I'm afraid of for you, Mr. Customer, is that you're not going to be prepared for the next time it happens the same way you're not prepared now. And then you're going to be in the same position you are now playing from behind rather than being able to push forward without any fear whatsoever. I want to help you yeah. become recession bulletproofed by putting together a system now so you don't have to ever run into this again. And then once we're through it, boom, we, we skyrocket. So that's why I'm afraid for you not to get started today. Yeah, dude. So that's crazy. I better be taking notes, guys. Y'all be better. You're going to go back to the replay. And I know people are going to be taking those notes. It's going to be like, what was that word for word using that? That's awesome. I'm just that's saying this it. Oh, and I didn't know we were live on your page. I'm over here like uh, in your Facebook group comedy. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I go live on my profile now because Facebook with groups, a little weird. Or like it hasn't been reaching everybody, uh, which is weird. So I've been doing live on my personal and I share it to different groups. Uh, yeah. Because then people don't miss it as much. But yeah. Dude, so Mauro put on here, the coronavirus is very dangerous. I'm in uh, Italy or yeah, in Italy and here all the business owners are closed. That is exactly why you position it this way. This yeah. way I helped you position it is geared for whenever the businesses are trying to shut down. Yeah. Like if you talk to any real estate agent that was back in 2008, the ones that blew up were the people that pushed themselves into the market were okay with mitigating their spend to be able to ha add more awareness. And then once all that shit ended, they all of a sudden became the number one agent. It's not a guessing game, guys. Yeah. You need to look at the trends and understand like now's the time to push. Mm -hmm. No, that's so true. I know that for myself, I was like, all this stuff started happening and I was like, oh my goodness like oh no what does this mean like i'm just about to launch something or like i was just about to like scale up and i was thinking or thinking of like all these other possibilities possibilities and overcomplicating it but i'm like wait a second all i need to do is just be the person who doesn't like freak out and just sits down and like works my butt off to make sure that i'm you know pushing my business f like further spending more money like you know investing in myself and then of course if i'm the one who's probably working harder and smarter than everyone else i mean mm -hmm. it only means you know that it's going to work out and I, I literally have like i stocked up i got my food back here we're chilling I, my plan i'm just gonna sit in my basement i make a ton of money to benefit my family and i'm just gonna you know stay healthy and try not to get this virus so that's what i'm doing and i'm gonna start doing what you're talking about over here with these clients and using that that's huge yeah man yeah it's massive massive awesome. pumps me up dude so, yeah talking about it i know i was like that's huge okay so another question i got earlier in our group somebody asked they're like i have a meeting today like what what do i say on the phone it's such a broad question i know and i was like just come to the training today let's talk about this because there's so many different approaches that we use on the phone right there's different scripts there's so many different strategies uh but is there anything that you try to tell people like or some sort of pillar or structure that you give people when they're going on to a call to client to just give them that head start and that confidence uh, on the phone. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just so you guys know, if you stay till the end, we're gonna have something to be able to help you with this whole sure. process. So stay yeah. till the end. Stay till the end. So, uh, so right off the bat, man, what people forget to do is to let somebody else talk first. Um, a lot of people have probably heard of this whole phrase, crocodile brain, right? Or that's yep. the small logic brain. So we have to appease that before the, the new part of your brain can actually start thinking, be creative, be excited. So the way we do that is get people to talk about themselves. Uh, mm. Like a me complex. So the first question I always ask people is like, what are you hoping to gain out of this call today? So by the end of the call, I can make sure I, I at least deliver that for you. And what That's that right. does, yeah, man, because it makes it about them. You always make it about them. Oh, yeah. So they'll tell you, and, and the problem is a lot of agencies will go into a call and think I need this whole preparation, this whole presentation and all this and that. And the problem with that is what if the client doesn't need any of that? <laughs> what, if, what if you actually did have a solution for them, but now they have this preconceived notion now that you can't help them yeah. because of your presentation? So the mm -hmm. only way to be right every single time, whether it's in a sale or you're talking to somebody, is to let them give you the answers and then you just agree with it. Mm -hmm. It's the only way you yeah, can never go wrong. True. Yeah, that's huge. And that's, I mean, that's something I definitely, like, the way I direct my calls, it's a lot of uh, 
the first, you know, half of the call is more so understanding where they're at, where they want to be, what they're looking for, uh, and, you know, connecting and conversing with them. And then I go into, you know, if we have, if that's what it is, and then we, you know, of course the classic, you know, be the bridge, right? The classic freaking YouTube ads you said, where, oh, you're the bridge. And it's so true. It's like, that's what it is. You got to, you know, create that gap. But I feel like some people do it wrong. They just go in assuming that every realtor wants Facebook ads or needs it, or they are selling, you know, dentists the same old thing. And so that kind of goes into another question I have too. And this kind of goes into sales. Uh, but for your offer, how important to you for you uh, is it for an offer? Like, do you focus on your offer and what does that look like? Big time. Um, in the terms of like a business maximization model, which uh, you said, you know, Andrew, Andrew has a great process for that. Uh, Andrew Cruzy maximization, but your entire yeah. business needs to feed it to feed itself. So like mm. each thing needs to feed to the next thing. Um, but in terms of presenting it to your uh, prospect, it needs to be so easy to grasp that it becomes a no brainer. Now for us, we offer something, uh, a combination of a few different role models that I've had uh, over time where uh, Joel Irway has a great process where he uh, always downsells. And then I had another mentor that talked about incentive-based selling. So what I've done over the years, I've always sold on contracts in, in every business, whether it was selling Kirby vacuums door to door where we did financing uh, on a three thousand dollar vacuum, which sounds crazy, but I sold ninety grand my first month with them. Like it's very possible. Um, I know it sounds crazy, right? But, door to door too, door to door. I don't. Ah, oh, that's yeah. crazy. I December crazy. knocking doors. Yeah, it was it was wild. Um, but the thing is, like, uh, I've always been used to selling contracts. So the trick is, how can you make something uh, create secured income for your business, which is month to month uh, mm -hmm. on contracts, recurring revenue. And then also, how can you make it so irresistible to your client and still be competitive in the market to where you don't have to charge less, right? Yeah. But then also where the client's just like, this is a no-brainer. So yeah. what we've done is I created something called a reversal method. This is where we offer 12 months, six months, and three months. But by the end of it, the client ends up asking for 12, even though we offer three. Huh. And if you how want to my- How are you doing that? All right. So if you watch any of my live closes, by the way, bro, if you go to my YouTube channel or my Facebook group, yeah. like last week, I live streamed me closing 24 grand. Yeah, I and saw you promote that. Are you talking about that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we did at the end of the call. I offered him a three month contract and he's like, I think we'll do the 12. And I was like, okay. And that was that's it. Awesome. So uh, yeah. now there's a fallback. So let's say they don't do that. Right. Uh -huh. And I'm going to explain how we do it in a sec. But let's say they don't do that. And let's say they save the three months, right? And they want to do that instead. But let's say they're like, well, it still costs too much. Be like, okay, well, because you're a first time caller, we can offer you first, a first time caller fast start incentive, which is where we give you the 12 month pricing at three months. Mm, okay. So here's, here's how the structure works. 12 yeah. months, uh, the average in what we charge is 2,500 for 12 months per month, right? Is average. And then six months yep. will be like 3,500 and then per month for six months. And then a uh, three month will be 5,000 a month for three months. Okay. okay. That's how it works. So what happens yep. is people hear 12 months and I start with 12 because immediately they're like, whoa, 2,500 a month for 12 months. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't oh, know. Okay. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. So then mm -hmm. what happens is they hear six months and they're like, ah, that sounds kind of reasonable. I feel a little bit better about that. And they hear a three month option, but it's 5,000 a month. And all of a sudden they're like, ah, oh, the duration sounds great, but that's a lot of money per month. Because yeah. the, goal, the goal on this is to, first you need to understand your market and what people are charging. So 5,000 mm -hmm. a month for like real estate agents is way beyond what they're used to paying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my goal is to overprice the three month option. Because okay. immediately, yeah, immediately what happens now is they say to themselves like their initial fear was duration and now their newest yeah. fear which exceeds that previous fear is uh price so now all of yeah. a sudden the duration doesn't really matter yeah yeah so Dang. they start to they lean back on on the smaller fear which is duration yeah and then you're still you're still making that the 12 month uh each month like 2500 that's still like decently what you're looking for per month right so like, even if they yeah. don't 
pay that 5,000. But let's say they do want three months because for some reason they're like, fine, we'll do, you know, 5,000 for three months. Like you said, well, you're, you know, you still as close 5,000 that, and then you can, you probably upsell them on more months. And do you, do you do on, do you do uh, upsells and downsells with your agency clients as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll get into my coaching model in a sec, but yeah, our, our, our coaching, we only work with agencies on hiring sales mm-hmm. reps and their sales process. I'll get into that. In a okay. Second. It's different than the consulting model. Um, uh, yeah. consulting is like social media marketing or any service-based business. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason I came up with this and if people are wondering, like, cause I see here that Dave said that makes sense. Well, here's where I got the idea. I read in a book once, um, where somebody, uh, they, their car got scratched and they were like super mad that their car got scratched because it was this really expensive luxury car. And I would have been pissed too, but then their car gets T-boned and totaled on the side. And then they were like, oh my God, I wish I just had the scratch. Hmm. So that's how I came up with this. I was like, so they had something that they feared more than the other thing and they didn't realize it yet. So this yeah. is how I went about the sales process. Like people fear contract duration, but what they fear more is something they can't spend. But if they want it, then they know I have to pick the lesser fear. So mm. They know it's going to happen yeah. anyway. They have to pick the lesser fear. So, okay. Dang. That makes sense. I <laughs> just straight. I'm yeah. now I'm like, I'm just thinking now with like my copywriting agency, how I'm going to do that too. Like how, how, cause I've been with like what I'm doing. Copywriting is a little different than, you know, say, uh, marketing or Facebook ads, right? It's a little different. It depends on what the client needs. And so pricing is always something we are like, okay, how do we do pricing? But I want like the most irresistible offer out there, uh, but also high ticket. And so that's definitely something I'm be thinking about and how we can make it, uh, you know, monthly kind of thing, but have that kind of pricing model. That's sweet guys. Guys, if you're watching this, you guys need to start doing that. That that's huge. So write this stuff down. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, we I'm had a, listening. I'm learning it. You guys need to as well. You know, yo, somebody came in and they're they're a younger guy, a younger group, right? They have business partners, mm-hmm. and the younger they never sold a contract, brand new agency, they don't have a proven offer, and they're selling to gyms, which is not a high ticket client. No, oh. and their first 21 days, they sold an eighteen thousand dollar contract, fifteen hundred a month awesome. at twelve months. Dang. So that's, and like, that's crazy. That's awesome. Like in long term, Cause I mean, if you have that client for, you get them on for that long, it saves, I feel like dealing with like clients, like from hell, you know, the clients are like one month and they're just like, Oh, this is bad. Like, you know, there's not enough time for that campaign or the client that is just, you know, if you have them for that much longer, you build that relationship and I'm sure you can then upsell them or downsell them on any like different things throughout that process i'm assuming yeah so um i don't know how deep we're gonna get in sales training because i know we have 30 minutes left i know you have other questions but in the terms of like the sale itself what helps it move forward and what helps what helps you get an additional sale after the initial sale is expectations so when you Mm. set the right expectations it then adds clarity which adds confidence and confidence closes so it's a chain reaction of emotions that helps you get the sale and the upsell yeah. So that's why it's super important. So how are you, how are you uh, giving your clients expectations or giving people after the sale or before? What does that look like in your systems? So, so the first thing is going to be understanding their sales cycle. Um, so what we'd want to do is if they do the three month contract, uh, then we would go in and say, look, within month, month one and two, this is what we expect in the first 30 days. So the first two weeks are going to be us putting the campaign together. The next week, Mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing leads come in. Fourth week, you're going to start seeing this. Now, what I've come to learn is this, is that um, from my previous experience working at the Yellow Pages, is that a lot of the time, what's on paper isn't actually what's happening in real life. Have you ever found yourself in a similar situation? And the reason why I say similar situation is because it's strategically vague in the same way that when you go to a magic Mm -hmm. show with a fortune teller, they're like, I feel like somebody's about to come into money and their name starts with a, a, a J and O and Oh, Josh, it's me. And you're like, <laughs> you, yeah, you, well, that's what it is. So being strategically vague allows the client to be able to come up with their own interpretation. Yeah. So if you're like similar position, they'll be like, yeah, definitely. I was actually here. Then this happened. I'd be like, exactly. So what I've come to learn is this. And so all we're doing is agreeing with them. So now they feel like we understand them more. Yeah. So that's okay. how you can never be wrong. Remember, they give you the right answers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's helping you out. 
Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, man. So that's how we go into that part of the process. And then we would say, what I want to do is make sure we have a meeting every week because what I've come to learn is we don't run into that and we want to be proactive instead of reactive. Would that be okay with you? Mm. And they're like, yeah, that sounds great. I'd be like, okay, we, or we only have to do that until you say otherwise, but this is to make sure that we can yeah. uh, make any pivots and adjustments we need to. So yeah. what you've done there is a technique I, I refer to as defusing the bomb before it blows up. So what happens is down the road, they're going to ask like, well, how do we know you're going to be showing us results? How do I know this? How do I know that? Well, what you've done is you've already told them that you're going to keep up with them every week to monitor this, to get ahead of it mm. before something bad happens. Yeah, that makes sense. That, yeah. I feel like that, that's something people should be doing because a lot of people here might be thinking every week, like, dude, I, I, you know, I wanted like freedom, whatever. I'm like, here's the thing, guys. If you're watching this and you're like complaining about that, I mean, unless you have so many clients, I feel like, or you don't have time to do that. I mean, a lot of you guys are probably just starting out, right? You may not have, you know, 30 clients. So you do have time. So I feel like putting in that extra uh, effort is going to save you from having bad clients and losing clients uh, and definitely something that you should do. I feel like that's huge. I know we've done something similar. I mean, we've done like monthly calls, so it's not as good, but I feel like weekly would be huge as well. Yep. And the other reason why is because again, customer service, which is what that is, is not just about the experience on the cake. It's really your opportunity to get sell, down sell, or cross sell. So every week I would go in and say, guys, the expectation was this. We want to see any leads because let's have a 90 day sales cycle, right? So they don't close the deal mm -hmm. for 90 days. So in their first three months, they wouldn't get a sale. So our expectation is to have this much in the pipeline so we can project this much revenue. So I would be like, mm -hmm. guys, we are blowing this out of the water right now. We only thought we were going to have like leads come in by this time. We have 40. All right, so here's yeah. what I'm thinking we do because odds, I mean, just by what's happened in the first few weeks, we are way exceeding expectation. Yeah, be like, here's what I want to do. All right, the best move right now would be to add in additional service because what will happen over the next two months, we're projecting this amount of revenue. So we want to make sure this stuff is already in line and in place. So it gives us, you know, uh, by the yeah. end of the 90 days. So. I would suggest that we add this into what you guys are already doing. So yeah. now what happened is you just got an upsell. This is what I refer to as landing and expanding. Dang. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Sorry, my camera just freaked out on me again. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's no, what makes could. sense. <laughs> um, yeah. So also another thing, a lot of people, I'm just going through and I like to cover like objections or common things I hear when new agency owners or uh, even like experienced ones. Because I feel like a lot of people I deal with are new people that are getting into the game. They just bought a course uh, and they're trying to, you know, figure out how to sell, right? Mm -hmm. And so something I always hear uh, is people don't have much, much confidence getting onto the phone, right? They're just starting out. They're like, no, I don't have results. Um, I don't have past clients. I, I have the, I know what I need to do. Um, but what do I do? Right. And I talk about something I say, I call it manufactured confidence and ways to do it. But what are, what are your advice for people that are at that stage in their agency? Dude, I love what you just said that they're manufactured confidence. That is a hundred percent right. So the way I view it and the way I manufacture it is that, if I've never done something before, then obviously I'm not going to be confident in it, but you do it anyway. It's mm -hmm. like you, people that are getting their driver's license. They've never done it before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and if people feared uh, this that much, they would never would have got their license. You know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. but what they did is they studied and they tried anyway because they were confident in their ability to figure it out. So whenever you're mm -hmm. in business, my suggestion is to, don't drive your confidence or manufacture your confidence from the outcome of something you've never done. Manufacture your confidence from your ability to create an outcome that's going to work. Pivot yeah. where you need to make it work. So that's where you should drive your confidence from is your ability to be willing to answer to something that you haven't solved yet. That's huge. That's so true. I feel like that's definitely, that's what I tell you. I'm like, just be going, like let the clients know, like if you're talking to them, if it comes down to sales process, 
and they're like, well, you don't have much experience. Just like, let them know that you're so confident that you're going to put in the work to bring the results that they want to see. That's how I did. I mean, I was just a little 14 year old kid. Like I took a course from Iman and I was like, okay, like, I don't even know. Like, actually I just, I think I just watched his YouTube videos and I just jumped in and finally not have an ad manager. Right. It was like, I don't know, but right. I was still like, okay, I know there's stuff out there that's going to help me. And if you're confident enough that you're going to put in the work and you're willing to fail, uh, then it's just, it's going to benefit and it's going to work in terms of that. So I think that's so cool. That's like, that's the way to do it. Dude, absolutely. And if you guys, like, if you watch any of my live closes, I, I throw some on YouTube where I'm closing like anywhere from like twenty four dollars to $60,000 sales. And you're going to notice because it's for other agency owners. Mm. And I just do this sometimes for people on my team because, you know, I, I like the, the recordings. I actually don't take a commission or anything on it. Just do it for the fun of it. And yeah. Hey, you know, it's $60,000 deal. Whatever. No, no anyway. you know, something. I don't need it. I don't need it. You know, it's a little something just for fun for the yeah, content. You know. So uh, the thing is, like, when you do go and do that, um, it's really important to understand to, you don't need to know everything about it. And when you watch me on these calls, you're going to say to yourself, like, he didn't even say what the service, what is he offering? Like, I still don't mm -hmm. understand what he's offering. They just bought $24,000 of nothing. And it's because yeah. the line that I use to make sure that, that happens when they say, how are you going to do this is, look, I'm not going to get lost in the weeds explaining what I do. And the reason why is because if you're anything like me or anything like our best clients, what we've come to realize is anytime we get lost in the weeds, it adds confusion and confusion adds frustration, which makes us fearful of whatever the next step is. So we just don't take one. But what I will tell you is this, we're not going to get fancy. I'm not going to distract you with shiny objects and bright lights and flashy things. We're going to use Facebook, but what makes us different and the reason we keep winning is because of how we qualify on the front end. So let's talk a little bit more about that for you. When you get a lead in, mm -hmm. what does a quality lead actually look like from start to finish? So now what you've done is you've defused that entire yeah. part of the objection and you've put it back on them. Dang. Dang. That's, that's awesome. Them. Yeah. So this is why I've <laughs> never had to explain, because I don't know, most of the time I don't know what I'm selling with these agency owners. I just yeah. know that they use social media somehow. Um, yeah. But yeah, so... Awesome. That's so cool. Um, and I know a lot of people on our lives are always curious about like what it is you're actually like selling. I know you have a, you have coaching and then I know you have like a agency model. So what is that? What are, what does your business models look like? in uh, in terms of that right now, and what are you focusing on? Cause I know people are just, they're always so interested like in what you're doing. I don't know. I know I am too with everyone. You always like, just want to know what someone else is doing. Right. So I'm sure people would love to hear that. What does that look like for you? Yeah. So we have a three tier system. Um, and, and like I said, your whole business needs to feed itself. So typically we don't talk about every single thing. We typically only talk about one thing and that's the art of sales, yeah. which is my coaching program to help you with traffic and sales. So awesome. remember if you guys stay till the end, I got something cool for you that yeah. you don't have to pay for. It's going to help. <laughs> um, but so that's the first thing that we always get everyone in. Cause if you're not generating at least 15 to 20 calls a week because we generate like five to 15 calls per day organically and if you're not Thanks. generating at least 20 a week then you don't have mm -hmm. a sales problem you have a marketing problem yeah so that's the first thing so a lot of people confuse the two like they haven't given them the self they haven't given them the self themselves a chance to be good because <laughs> they're taking like three calls a week yeah they don't have enough they don't have enough data they don't have traffic or meetings exactly. on the calendar it's a law of numbers so yeah. anyway, that's step number one. It's making sure that your traffic and your front end stuff, the top of funnel stuff is rock solid and predictable. And then also you can start learning sales. That's step mm -hmm. number one. That's referred to as our art of sales program. The next step is something called team edition. So this is art of sales team edition. This is where we come in and we actually recruit you a sales rep, which you make your money back on in the first 30 days. So hmm. typically when we do this, they make people make their money back in 14 days or less. So we have a 30 day guarantee. Wow. Um, yeah. So yeah, we go through a three-step hiring process for a sales rep. And what we do is we take them through multiple personality tests. So they match all of mine. We take them through mm -hmm. multiple quizzes. So they match my answers. We take them through <laughs> a full, yeah, we take them through a full pitch, which are graded by me and my COO, which they have to pass a chemistry yeah. and a technique portion. So you have to learn to sell without having a bunch of product knowledge. Ooh. And then the last step is the interview process. So we have to be able to see that they're a team player 
and that they would be about the business and not about themselves. Yeah. So we take wow, them that's a thing. lot. That's <laughs> yeah. I feel like people always yeah. like, oh, I'm just gonna go on Facebook and say, hey, I need someone to call leads for me, and they just that's probably why it's not working. Is yeah, that's what they're doing, and you're over here running them through freaking quizzes and negative. That's awesome. The, the first step of the interview process takes an hour and a half, and that's before they ever get to pitch us. And if <laughs> and there's some people that don't qualify because they have to hit certain things on the personality test, and the reason we do that is because. Mm-hmm. When you're talking to a sales rep, you have to be able to talk to them in a way that motivates them, not in the way that you're used to be spoken to. If you want them to, to like perform at their best potential. So anyway, not everybody even makes it past the yeah. first part. It takes an hour and a half to do. Like it's just how the game goes. Um, but anyway, so that's yeah. what we do for you. Uh, so as long as you're generating at least 15 appointments per week, then, and some people never even go through the first stage of the art of sales. They go straight into team edition. Yeah. Um, but you have to be doing at least 15 calls a week because we project for a 35% no-show rate. It's Mm. totally, it's industry average. So they come on and they'll make, like I said, you'll, uh, like our sales rep, he came in and did 60K his first month. Uh, Like another person, we took them from 25,000 to 70,000 in 30 days. Um, (laughs) And it's it's a totally normal thing. And anyway, third step to our ascension is called alumni. So this is Art of Sales Alumni. And the way that works is when you're done with your first 90 days with us uh, from the Art of Sales, you can either stay in here month to month and let us just train you in sales five days a week in a small Mm -hmm. group, or you could bring your sales reps in there and let us train them for five days a week. It's month to month. Or the sales reps that we hired for you after 90 days, we'll train them month to month. So alumni is where you graduated from the initial, and then we continue to train you ongoing month to month. Dang, that that's so cool. That's a smart, that's smart because you that's like your value ladder too. It's just like, you, and then the month to month too, you're you're making and they're paying month to month right off that. That's crazy. So then every that's time awesome. someone needs another sales rep as they keep scaling, because we teach paid traffic with organic traffic. So as you keep mm-hmm. scaling, you'll need another sales rep. So then you come to us for the next winning sales rep that'll help you do like an extra, you know, thirty to hundred grand a month in the first month. So. Dang. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, um, and, and I know a lot of people were hearing about, you know, what you're doing, your success. We've seen your success and that's the stage we see you on now. But when in your life did you feel the lowest? When did you feel like quitting? When did you feel like you should have stopped or you just honestly felt like giving up? Because I know we've all been there. Yeah. And honestly, as you grow in entrepreneurship, you feel that more and more, even when you're making oh, yeah. money. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You probably it's, felt it. It's like, it's, oh, all the time worse but it's yeah, kind of dude. motivating too it is it is for sure it's like uh when you become more successful the highs are really high and the lows are really mm-hmm. low yeah so Cause you feel like you have this whole like uh you see where you were and how other people see you as like you know and then if you aren't that for everyone else that's for me i feel like if like i have a bad month or something or if it just wasn't going i'm like oh no my whole community sees me as this like you know person and this month, I'm not that person. And so then you're like, I feel like that's something I've dealt with. That's something like, what is, what is your failure? Where, like, when was that in your life? What did that look like? Yeah, dude. Oh, my gosh. So step number one was 2018 in January. So I scaled my initial agency up to 10K a month in 90 days, and um, which I was proud of at the time. But then the yellow pages hit me with a cease and desist on uh, December 23rd, 2017 which if you guys aren't familiar with what that is, that's them saying, if you don't drop your clients that went over to you from here, then we're going to sue you. And uh, yeah, dude, it's it's a scary process when you like, cause you get the letter in the mail and it's just the whole thing. Um, So I had to start over in January. And the thing is like, you know, I have two kids. I had an apartment in the middle of a town center, which, you know, I had that. And then the new car, Yukon Denali XL at the time, that was like (laughs) my biggest purchase I ever made. Um, Yeah. So yeah, I'm over here like, oh shit, now I have shitty credit. I have no, no clients. Mm-hmm. I'm in all this fancy stuff, which you shouldn't do as a new entrepreneur, by the way. <laughs> uh, yep. But you know, is what it is. So then I was like, yeah. well, I can either retreat and get a sales job anywhere and work for somebody else under their time, or I can make this work again with brand mm-hmm. new clients, brand new niche, everything. So I was yeah. like, 
game on. I, I went in, bet on myself, and I scaled to 12,500 a month in 60 days. Uh, that's when I was like, yo, this is a lot easier than I think yeah. people are making it look. Uh, yeah. So from there, I started focusing on sales because I realized that was what I really brought to the table. And uh, so that would probably be the first time that I hit a super low was whenever they hit me with that. Uh, I would say the second time is January of 2019. So just yeah. last year. And because I'm about two and a half years in business now. And okay. January 2019, I, I remember we did like 42,000, I think that month. And um, I just remember that like, I was like, you know what, I'm going to build a team. And at the yeah. time, I didn't have the right <laughs> guidance. Okay, yeah. guys, so here's the thing. I did, I scaled from zero to 42,000 a month as a solopreneur in eight months. Like that was easy to do. But whenever you build a team, if you don't have the right guidance and you've never done it before, like you're gonna, you're, you're probably gonna make the same mistake I did. Yeah. And I had $43,000 go out that month. And I made 42. So if you guys can like put two and two together, I lost $1,000. And I generated $42,000. So when people hear, they're like, oh my yeah, God, yeah. Uh, that's a lot of money. And then they're like, oh my God, you lost money? I mean, yeah. like, that's, that's called cash flow negative. So even though we had cash in the bank, cash flow negative means that you generated less cash than you, than you spent and your expenses and everything went out. So mm. I didn't even know what any of that meant. I didn't know anything. Yeah. So that was probably my next slow because I was pretty, pretty nervous. I flew people out. I thought I wanted to do the in-house thing. Uh, I didn't want to do virtual because I love camaraderie. Oh, you know, no. You did in-house? Dude, I was oh. – <laughs> I, I flew four people yeah. out to Kansas from across the country. I flew them to Kansas. No. <laughs> yeah, man. I bet they were happy. They're like, well, what's up? <laughs> Dude. I mean, they're feeling good. It was super dope for the, yeah, super dope. And then, um, but then yeah. I ended up having to fly two people back over the next two months, fire one person. And then one person stayed on uh, for half the year. And um, that's what that looked like. So I would say that was probably my next low because you feel like, again, even though yeah. cash is there, you feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. I mean? So I would definitely say that. Um, that will be the next one. I, don't know, I think those are probably the two lowest I would think. Yeah. 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 Dang it. That's, and that's like something to think about. Cause I feel like everyone, we, you know, we bring people on these interviews and, you know, we see, like I said, there's like, I say like the stage that we're on and like, you know, people see the stage you're on that I'm on anyone else. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like it, that's all we really see. And not all the time. will people see like what it took to get there. It's that classic, you know, Instagram crap, you know, motivational posts where it's like that iceberg, you know what I'm saying? It's everywhere. And there's all, you know, but like, it's so true though. It's so true uh, with all of that. And so with failure, I know a lot of people watch this right now, they could be in that spot. This whole virus thing, it could be affecting their business. It could make them feel like they're in a low. So what would you say to them to just like yell at them? Be like, you know, this is what you need to do, or this is what you need to set your mindset, mindset as uh, when you're going through that, what would you say to them? Two things. All right. And technically three things. Number one, stay the course. Okay. So that would be the first mm -hmm. thing. Uh, number two, fall in love with the process and the process will be good to you. It pays. Okay. So that'd be the next thing. It's those mm -hmm. compounded efforts. So fall in love with the process. And then the third thing would be to understand why you're playing this game. So you can stop looking at everybody else. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, as we yeah. grow, especially cause like, like you were saying, like you, uh, you know, oh, this is Rob. And, you know, he knows a lot of the guys in the internet games, like, cause we all yeah. grew up in space together yep. and we all That's scale true. together, you know? Um, yeah. So the problem with that though, is even though we're all successful in our own ways and different degrees, we still, or I find myself doing this, like comparing myself at different points. So if I have oh, a yeah. low, yeah. So if I have a low, I automatically start to compare myself. Like why the fuck am I having a low? Yep. You know what yep. I mean? You gotta look at everyone yeah. else and yeah, woo, man. that's the word. Dude, you could be at 100K a month. I remember the first month we hit 100K in revenue sold. And this was actually the month that you saw that picture. That Andrew was in that picture. Yeah. That was our first month. Yeah. And uh, dude, I cannot tell you like that moment felt great, like at the event, but like the whole month itself felt like a major failure to me. 
And mm. I immediately hit a low and I was like, why is my MRR not this? Why is this not this? Why are my, like my, why is my team not this? Like yeah. all this other stuff. Um, yep. So it's really easy to get lost in all of these tangible things or non-tangible things that have nothing to do in relation to your why. Mm. Yeah. And that was going to the next question I was going to ask you is the why, like, what is your why? What is that for you? Uh, that's my kids. And I made some really wow. tough decisions. This is really, yeah. So I've made some really tough decisions over the last year uh, yeah. that, that had to do with my kids. Like a relationship I was in wasn't going to work because, you know, I wouldn't, you know, it just, I wouldn't be able to move to do yeah. that kind of stuff or any uh, decisions I make like with time, you know, mm. stuff like that yeah. because they come first. So my kids are my why, but once you know that it makes it easier to say no to things that yeah. aren't going to yeah produce that that's awesome yeah because i see i saw you went on your facebook and you had a lot of picture of kids and like all right that that must be it that has to be one of the biggest reasons why you're so successful and have pushed forward is definitely because of that so i commend you for that and i i know i'm still a little young kid i mean i you know i still have some time to go before i have some kids but uh, definitely a role model for that. I, mean, I hope, I mean, I'm trying not to have kids yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, I think we'll, you're good. We'll, you know, <laughs> we'll wait a little longer. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's so cool. Um, well, yeah, I mean, in terms of all that, it kind of wraps up, you know, what we're talking about and oh my goodness, dude, I'm, I'm going through and I'm gonna have to like, uh, you know, like, <laughs> like timestamp all the things you talked about. Cause I'm like thinking like, holy cow, this is awesome. It's like what we're talking about. So that's so cool. Um, but kind of going, I always like to wrap and end with like one more question. Uh, this may even reflect something we talked about earlier, but for someone who's watching this, they're just starting out with any business, coaching, consulting agency. Someone, if someone pays you, is going to pay you like $5,000 to give, you the, give them the secret to making it work. What are you going to yell at them and tell them to do uh, for that one statement or secret? Uh, to get them success, what would you say to them? Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And you guys probably hear that all the time now, because like there's no yeah. gimmicks anymore. Like no, people just have to be real with you. Um, but you got to keep it simple. And uh, we run everything through one funnel. We use the same script for every single platform: Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, got to keep it simple. And your offers have to be yeah. simple too, easy to grasp and irresistible. Dang. That's so, I love that. I love that. That's something I always think about. I'm like, you know, when I'm building something new or I look, Oh, I could do this. I could do this. I'm like, Josh, you don't need that. You don't need like this new integration for your webinar or like your new software. You don't need to sign up. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's huge guys. So keep it simple. You heard it from Rob. You heard it from the man himself. But before we go, I know we talked about how we had something a little special that I was shocked that you said you were going to give away everyone here so you just want to go over that because we want to reward these people for sitting here you know what i'm saying their their, their girlfriends are probably calling them up saying what are you doing on facebook you know what i'm saying so it's friday so what are you gonna give these people uh for showing up and attending this live and even the replay yeah so i i probably shouldn't be giving this out because we are using this to sell through our ads and i've actually sold it we did a facebook post that sold like three thousand dollars of this in a day and uh which by the way, if you guys don't know Facebook groups and how to sell through Facebook groups, go learn that. Very <laughs> powerful. Um, but I'll yeah. drop it in the comments. You want me to put it in the comments? Yeah, and I'll put it, I'll take that link and put it in the whatever when I post on YouTube and stuff too. But yeah, if you drop in the comments, people can go okay. grab that too. Um, okay, so this right here is uh, our masterclass training on how we're generating five appointments to 15 appointments per day. Mm. our exact script, our strategy, everything. There you go. Oh, it, it looks like it said your comment goes against community standards and only I can see it. What? So too much heat guys. It's too hot. What the heck? Yeah, dude. Okay. Drop it to me and I'll, I'll make sure we get this. Let me see. I, Let me I put, put it, it in the chat. I put it in the chat. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I got it. Okay, dang. They're like, no, you can't give that away, dude. Yo, they really <laughs> did, guys. Like, wow. <laughs> what the heck? Dang, I wonder if Facebook, dude, that's Facebook for you. Um, but okay, also, someone just asked some questions. Let me see. 
TikTok. Oh, I don't use TikTok. I'm not a TikTok guy. Dude. I feel like nobody would be interested if I did a TikTok. No, I think you would, dude. I think you would. I feel like you're, dude, okay, do TikToks with your kids, man. Use them for clout. Get those views. You like that <laughs> entrepreneur dad, you know what I'm saying, dude? Woo, you get all hey. the views. Like, I'm an entrepreneur dad. Like, you know, I, this is my day looks like, or just be like, I don't know, something. I feel like. And then I also have a dog. I also just have yeah. like a golden retriever. Do you, okay, do you know that guy? He does like, he does his, I think you've seen it on Facebook, probably. He does uh, marketing for gyms. This thing is like fitnessleads.com or something. He was like friends with Ty Lopez. I don't know. He's like this fitness dude. He does TikToks and he's like an entrepreneur. I forgot his name. It starts with an R. But I, I could definitely see you doing it. You remind me of him. And like, you could definitely, you, you should get on TikTok, man. How old Yo, are you? How, you're still pretty young. Yeah, I'm uh, 28. Okay, so I'm, you know what I'm saying. You're still, I mean, you're not like a, you're not like an old. It wouldn't be weird if you're on TikTok. You know, like some of the older guys get on TikTok. You're like, just don't ruin it for us, man. Oh, uh, that's it. what I'd be afraid <laughs> that I would be though. I'd get on there and I'd get like five like, views. My heart would be broken. Yeah. My soul. Oh my! If you found my TikTok, dude, be like, who is this person? Like, is this guy really running a six-figure business? That's you don't want to see my TikTok. If you guys find it, though, I'll pay you like $100. Go and try to find it, seriously. Find TikTok. Next Yo, it post. reminds me, though, like, because I remember YouTube, I had like three subscribers for like two months. And I think one was my mom. So I'm like, yo, what if TikTok's like that? <laughs> I'm, not about, I'm not about to be that life again. So. Yeah. But yeah, now we don't Dude, have any all right, subscribers well, anymore. Get on so. it, man. Well, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing on YouTube? Right? Is YouTube, what are your main platforms right now? for uh pushing stuff or organic yeah, traffic. So what are your favorites? if you guys want to go find me i would definitely say my facebook group um mm -hmm. which is just seven figure sales secrets coaches consultants smmas um i know we have like 80 400 or something people on that Dang. um my youtube channel which we post up one or two new videos a week uh that has it's mm -hmm. just under rob quinn r-o-b-b -B, and then q-u-i-n-n -N. uh but that one we have like I don't know. I think we're at 4,500 subscribers or something. All right. Dang, uh, there you go. Instagram, we do a lot on stories mainly. I know I have like 10,000 mm -hmm. followers on that. So we use that for yeah. that. LinkedIn, I'm not as active on, but we have like 5,000. I 000. wish I was too. Yeah. I mean, we have like 5,000 connections on there. We use LinkedIn automation. So we generate like one to three calls a day on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I mean, all the platforms are pretty established. YouTube, Instagram. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So we use all yeah uh, yeah i definitely need to get on linkedin that's like i feel like because linkedin uh i know you know you know what a profile funnel is that's what i'm being on talking about that's our whole thing and that's how you know i built my business was organic and profile funnels but like with linkedin i know if i can crack crack the code of linkedin profile funnels and organic it's like it, for it will work for anyone because you can connect with a lot of people in the automation too with connecting it's not like Facebook where you have to have a certain amount, like a group, so a certain amount of people. And that's like your lead bucket above LinkedIn. I feel like there's such a wide range for, you know, adding people. That's something like, I yeah. definitely want to look into. Oh, dude, it's crazy. We, uh, man, my guy loves getting on LinkedIn because we have people now. So when you figure out one traffic source, guys, organically, then figure out one at a time, create the SOP. Uh, so we have somebody on Facebook or on LinkedIn that books mm -hmm. for my profile. We have somebody on my, in the Facebook group that books. Mm -hmm. Uh, people coming into the group. We have somebody inside the Facebook group that books with the, in the Facebook group. Um, I still do my own Instagram. So if you guys message me on Instagram, yeah. it's actually me. Uh, <laughs> and are they doing it through your account, like on LinkedIn and Facebook? Yeah. No, okay. on Facebook. I thought about doing that for me. On Facebook. Okay. Group. I'm afraid to do it on Facebook because of the whole like getting banned thing. Yeah, I have to that's what I was thinking. Facebook. Yeah. It's not worth the risk okay. for me. I mean, we're, we're booking five to 10, like five to 15 a day on those three. So it doesn't, yeah. not that yeah. big deal. And we're about to have our ads back on again. That was the thing this year, Back's by on. the way, guys, if you want to talk about like, if you want to see what it looks like, like we're doing more, we did more revenue in Q1 this year than we did last year. So we're projecting more on the year, but that's with Ooh. crazy shit happening. Like month one, uh, I went against my judgment and I sourced, uh, some sales reps elsewhere and it didn't work out mm. for me. That's why we went back to our process, but I sourced them. I spent six grand in ads that month and I ran all the traffic to them. And then we had zero closes. 
So that was a major setback for us. And then um, February, we got our closer back who did 50 grand, but our ad account, our business manager got disabled. So oh. that, was, that was obstacle number two. And then this month, we had to find, get ads back up. So then we were putting up YouTube ads, but we're just now getting those up. They go live Monday. So like we've gone four okay. weeks, yeah, four weeks without any ads running. And um, we had to let two sales reps or three sales reps total go. Had one guy win and do really well. And this is all while we're like rolling out our new rebrand of the sales agency. And yeah, uh, so anyway, and yeah, we're still doing more revenue than we did Q1 of last year. So it just goes to show guys like, you're going to have to pivot all the time. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, that, good luck with that. I saw the sales agency, how you're rebranding it. That's, mm -hmm. that's a good, I feel like that. I love how like simple things like having a name where it's just so obvious what it is. Like, I feel like the name just, you know, sums up what the offer is. Okay. You know, sales agency. So I think that that was smart. I saw that. Like, okay, that's gonna, that's gonna be easy to remember. That's, that's gonna be good. So props Appreciate to you on doing that. But uh, yeah, I mean, guys, I put the link in the comments for all of you guys uh, to grab and I'll make sure to put it on the bio or wherever the heck. Uh, so make sure that you guys go check that out. Like seriously, honestly, it probably shouldn't even be for free. I don't know why Rob is doing this. He must be, I don't know if you're drinking a little bit or so. I don't know, but I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's Friday. Okay, it's Friday. We get it. <laughs> Um, Yo, I almost did bring some wine on this call, but I was like, is, does anybody do that? <laughs> I mean, no one has, but I feel like it'd be pretty chill. I don't know. I mean, hey, I'm like, I'm 18 now. So it's not like, I feel like people would be like, why are you drinking wine on a live with like a 17 year old kid? But Grape I'm an juice. adult now, dude. Let's go. So. <laughs> Grape juice. But that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so I appreciate it guys. Make sure you go show some love on this interview. And go join Rob's Facebook group, follow him on uh, Instagram, wherever else you need to, to get all the value that he is dropping with sales. Uh, and you guys heard a lot about what he's offering. So if that interests you at all, and you feel like your agency fits uh, into who he's helping, make sure to go reach out to him and let him close you using his crazy sales strategies. Um, but Rob, I really appreciate you being here. I know I'm going to stop this live and we'll probably chat for a little bit if you have time uh if you can uh and yeah guys really appreciate it make sure to watch the replay uh thank you so much for being here rob thanks for the invite bro later guys all right looks like it stopped